chapter 2.1 is linear functions. And what is a line? Well, a line's a straight object uh, between uh, defined by two points. So it is given two points, it is the straight line connecting them and goes on forever both directions. The main property of a line is slope. What is slope? Slope is how much it goes uh, up divided by how much it goes over. So also known as rise over run. Now we always measure uh, to the right. So you want to think of going, this, this arrow can be confusing. You really want to think about this arrow down here. So when we go to the right, we actually go downwards. So we're going to have a negative rise in this uh, particular set of points here. So how do we compute rise and run? Run is just the difference between the x coordinates. So we'll go x2 minus x1. That's run, rise, same thing with the y's, y2 minus y1. So slope, we use the letter M, and slope is rise over run. So I'm going to write the y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So this right here is the slope of a line through these two points. Now I'm going to do something completely unexciting, which is multiply by the denominator. Once we're here, I am going to change the name of x2 and y2 to just x and y. So I'm just going to drop the uh, subscript down here. This is point slope form. And we usually see it written the other, uh, the other side, so we could subtract everything over to here, add everything over to here, multiply by negative one or just change sides. And this is the infamous point slope form right here. Now we're gonna do something even less exciting. We're gonna add y1 to both sides. y equals m, and I'm going to distribute my m at the same time, adding y1. And if we group these two together, right here, we have slope-intercept form. And all I did was I called B, I let B equal negative mx1 plus y1. This is our y-intercept right here. So this is how to get slope from a line, and then you can go into either form. Horizontal lines, what do they look like? Well, there's a horizontal line right there. How much does it rise? It rises zero. So the slope, the rise, you'll have zero on the top, so the slope will be zero. So horizontal lines have a slope of zero, and therefore they look like, in uh, either form, y equals zero. And I'll we'll go with this down here, y equals zero plus a number. So we'll just go with the y equals b. Now a vertical line, a vertical line has no run, has a zero run. So we would be divided by zero if we wrote the slope out. So if I write m, this m is not a number, it's undefined. So we have an undefined slope on a vertical line. How do we write a vertical line? Well. We know every single x coordinate is going to be the same, so we're going to write it as uh, x equals whatever x uh, value you have. We'll just call it uh, we'll call it a. So this vertical line, you just get x equals a. Now, how do lines of functions work? Well, you get a linear function, and all we do for a linear function, you just basically replace y by f of x. So there's a linear function right off slope-intercept. 
Now for any function, you could find the average rate of change. What is that? Some function, have some curves in it. If you look at two points, you can get the line between these two points. So we'll say this function, we'll call it g of x. So how do I get the average rate of change between a and b? So our function y equals g of x, and we want to go for x in the interval a to b. So this is average rate of change. You're going to go with the, well, we'll relabel these. This is a comma g of a, and this point is b comma g of b. So it's going to look just like slope right here, except the y's right here. This is y1, and this is y2. So we have g of b minus g of a divided by the x values, b minus a. So this is our average rate of change.